Welcome to lecture 40, where we're going to design the first set of non-isothermal adiabatic reactors. Example 8.3, liquid phase isomerization of N-butane. Normal butane, C4H10, is to be isomerized to isobutane in a continuous flow reactor. Isobutane is a valuable product that is used in the manufacture of gasoline additives. For example, isobutane can be further reacted to form isooctane. And you all know about the octane number in the gasoline that you purchase. The 2004 selling price of N-butane was 72 cents per gallon, while the price of isobutane was 89 cents per gallon. So you can see that there's a margin there. There is an opportunity for making money. The reactions to be carried out adiabatically in the liquid phase under high pressure using essentially trace amounts of a liquid catalyst, which gives a specific reaction rate of 31.1 per hour at 360 Kelvin. Calculate the plug flow reactor and CSTR volumes necessary to process 100,000 gallon per day, which translate into 163 kilomole per hour of a feedstock containing 90% or 90 mole percent in butane and 10 mole percent isopentane, which is considered as an inert here. Also calculate the equilibrium conversion in the reactor. So the reactor is reversible. The reaction is reversible. The feed enters at 330 Kelvin and the desired conversion is 40%. Some additions. So these are the information that we can extract. So we have a liquid phase reaction. The heat transfer rate is zero. The value of K is given at 360 Kelvin. And the feed temperature T0 is 330. And this is how the reaction looks like. Normal butane goes to isobutane. So let's symbolically write A goes to B reversibly. Type. What else we have? We have Ft0, the total molar flow rate. We have Ya0, we have Yi0. We can calculate Fa0 from the given information. Additional information that we would need to have. Because as we discussed earlier, if you want to design a reactor, there are four alt articles. The first one is the volume. Okay, second one is the conversion, then comes the thermodynamic and kinetic data, and the fourth one is the conditions. So here the conversion is given, so we need to calculate volume. So we need to have the other two articles as well. The conditions which are given, and we need the thermodynamics and kinetic data. So that's why we have to look for the activation energy for this reaction. CA0 is also given. The delta H reaction, the heat of reaction for this reaction is minus 6,900 joule per mole of butane. Of course, the reaction is exothermic. And since the reaction is reversible, we need to find the Kc as well. So we get the Kc and it's given at 60 degrees C. We also need the CPs, the heat capacities. You can see that the heat capacity for A is the same as heat capacity for B. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Okay. So we go through the algorithm then. Let's go through the design algorithm and start collecting the equations. So the algorithm for the CRE design problem is the mole balance. Let's try the mole balance for both reactors. This is for plug flow reactor and this is for CCR. Of 
course, all written in terms of conversion because conversion is my preferred variable here. Then we write the rate law. The reaction is reversible, can be assumed elementary since no other information is given. And we don't have any issues with the KC, so we write it as simple as this. We don't need to derive it. Minus RA equals K times CA minus CB divided by KC. And remember, Shabab, the idea is whenever you provide an equation and introduce a variable, you need to provide an equation for that variable. Therefore, you know, after the first step, uh, step where we wrote the design equation, which we're going to use for designing the reactor, finding the volume, we had the rate law. So we provided the rate law. So we introduced here the rate of fraction. So we provided the rate law. But what other variables we are we have introduced here? Well, we have the concentrations, right? But we're going to take care of this later on the stoichiometry. But what about K? What about KC? Well, both are function of temperature, right? And the reaction is exothermic and run adiabatically. So that means the release heat from the reaction cannot leave the system. Therefore, it will increase the temperature of the system. So the values of K and KC would change. So they are variables. So K from Arrhenius equation, right? From two Arrhenius equation. This is K as a function of T from the knowledge of K at a given temperature and the activation energy. And KC. So where do we get the equation for Kc as a function of temperature? Well, we have Van Hoff equation, which provide a good equation for K as a function of temperature. We can start from there, right? And then we write an equation relating K to Kc. Type. So from Van Hoff equation, so we have this Van Hoff equation, and we check this does delta H reaction is delta H reaction function of temperature or it can be assumed constant. Well, you know already that you know, delta H reaction at any temperature equals a standard delta H reaction at TR, right? Plus delta CP times T minus TR. Okay, in this case, as we said, Delta Cp can be calculated from the stoichiometry, right? So it is Cpb minus Cpa. Both Cps are the same, so Cp goes to zero. So now we have delta H reaction at any temperature equals the delta H reaction at a reference temperature. So that means delta H reaction is not really function of temperature. Okay, therefore the Van Hoff equation can be simplified to this form. And then we can write for liquid phase reaction the relationship between K and KC. So it's K times K gamma times KC times the total concentration to the power minus delta. Of course, you remember gamma. Gamma is the activity coefficient, right? And we can assume an ideal gas. Therefore, the ratio between the, the activity coefficient will be 1. The ratio between the activity coefficient will be 1. So this goes to... 1 tamam and what about delta well delta here we have 1 minus 1 goes to 0 so we have left with k equal kc therefore you can replace the k here with kc tamam see okay and then we can rearrange to write kc as a function of temperature with the knowledge of Kc at a specific temperature and its reference temperature along with the delta H reaction. So now we have two equations. K is a function of temperature and Kc is a function of temperature. So they were variable. So we provided an equation, right? And when we provided the equation, now we have other variables, right? Another variable that is temperature. It's a variable as well. So we need to provide an equation. We need to provide an equation for T. Where do we get that equation from? Hmm. From the 
energy balance right from the energy balance so let's write the energy balance so summation of fa sorry fa naught summation of theta i cpi times t minus t naught plus fa naught times x times delta h reaction okay can we equals q dot times the shaft work can we simplify yes we can neglect the shaft work it's adiabatic so q dot is zero we know that delta cp is zero as well tamam okay so therefore we can solve for t we can solve for t so t equals t naught minus standard delta reaction times x divided by cpa plus theta i cpi where did we get this from of course we got it from here so t minus t naught is not going through the summation so it goes outside tamam and of course if a naught cancels out and here we have zero okay so we have summation of theta i cpi how many thetas do we have we have if we talk about theta we should look at the feed right so how many species we have in the feed two species a and the inert theta a is one and theta inert is theta i okay of course you can also for simplicity you can define this to be as cp naught tamam now we are ready to go to stoichiometry so we'll need to write ca as a function of conversion so let's write c as a function of conversion and also cb so ca equals if a over epsilon it's a liquid phase reaction so you can assume epsilon equals epsilon naught what about if a if a equals if a naught one minus x and this will give you c a naught one minus x okay and you can write do the same for cb type okay so what else in the stoichiometry do we need anything in the stoichiometry well not really right let's go to combine then and after combine comes evaluation okay so if we combine we get this equation for the rate law so basically we substitute it for CA and CB using these equations we got this term and then of course we can evaluate the equations okay so let's go to these equations and again black flow reactor this is the design equation CSTR this is the design equation so can we solve it with hand calculation can we solve the design equation with hand calculation well of course we can it's not dangerous i mean it's not difficult <laughs> but yes then let's evaluate as much parameters as possible okay if we're going to do hand calculation let's evaluate these parameters by ourselves okay how do we find the equilibrium conversion that something was also required in the beginning of the uh, lecture remember in the question says find the equilibrium conversion so how do you evaluate the equilibrium conversion correct from kc expressions huh? from kc expressions okay so kc equals cbe divided by cae cb at equilibrium divided by c at equilibrium and of course we need we have the stoichiometry already we have uh, sorry from the stoichiometry we have the concentration as a function of x so we write it as a we substitute for it and then cancels out and then we solve for xe 
please make sure that you do this at home. Okay, so we went through the design algorithm. We wrote the design equation. We then went to the rate law. And in the rate law step, we wrote equations for K and KC and also temperature. Then we went to stoichiometry to write the concentration function of X. Then we partially combined everything. And then we said we need to evaluate. So now we said we want to evaluate with hand calculation. So we need to evaluate as much parameters as required. And also we find an equation for Xa. In the next lecture, inshallah, we'll proceed with the calculation. See you then.